Bum 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 The Peter Dislike Show Bum 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 So here's the result after anodization uh my favorite Ganesh uh, the only disappointment I have with this round is I'm still working on how to pour it to avoid uh, the rough um, edges on the back, right? So as you're pouring bismuth, it's oxidizing. As you're pouring it, you can sometimes scrape the slag before it solidifies, but then it sometimes it makes the edges all um, uh, unsmooth. The, uh, the alternative is to uh, keep the slag in there and then sand. Uh, uh, after it's done, um, either sandpaper or steel wool, but sometimes the slide can be pretty deep, so uh, I think that's what turned out this time around. Oh well, I'm still perfecting it with trial and error. Uh, I don't think it's the end of the world that there's uh, the back looks like that. I think it kind of uh, adds to the flavor of it anyhow. Um, some of my other favorite molds are uh, the small Buddha, and um, the, the smaller version of the Ganesh, uh, the Pyramid, obviously. This one's a graphite mold. And uh, the Christmas trees and the small Buddha. So I just find these molds last a, a large number of pours and the, the product turns over. I've, I've tried quite a number of different molds. So uh, the graphite mold pretty much lasts indefinitely if you only pour bismuth. Um, these guys, the silicone molds, last at least 20 to 30 pours each, so uh, pretty good. Uh, I have a few trade secrets on them, how to get the pours just right. Not necessarily trade secrets, but they kind of go by feel. I'd be hard-pressed to uh, explain in a video or write down in a paper you know, how to do this. It, you have to do it by feel, right? Uh, that's why I often worry... If I take too long of a break from doing this, I may just forget about stuff like that, right? Maybe I'll, one of these days I'll probably shoot a video of myself doing this so, uh, to kind of document. It's kind of hard to document, though. It, it goes by feel. I'm not kidding when I say that. It's kind of like trying to explain to somebody how to ride a bicycle or... Um, you, you can't, right? Uh, it, it's, it, I, 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 it's just go by experience, right? Um... Anyway, one of my least favorite parts of doing this, believe it or not, is the anodizing. And I'll let you pause the video to think about why anodizing is uh, such a hassle for me. Well, it's one of the more beautiful parts of the project. Uh, unfortunately, it's messy. You get water everywhere. You get, um, and then you get, uh, sometimes if you're not careful, you get a minor zap. I mean, nothing serious. We're only talking 18 volts or so. Um, and, and more importantly, just water everywhere, messy. It, you, you got a basic solution, right? A dilute um, sodium hydroxide solution is what I use. Nothing dangerous in terms of the concentration, but it's messy, it's sticky, it makes your hand very rotten. Uh, you could wear gloves while doing it, but then it makes your hands all sweaty and all that. And uh, just not a very fun step compared to the pouring. And I mean, pouring does have its own perils, but not. It's not the pouring itself is not terribly messy, at least. Uh, if you're good at it. Anyway, um, it makes you. It, it makes me realize that everything that's good comes with its own set of perils, right? So, for example, right now I teach at Phoenix College, which is one of the best jobs I've ever had in terms of a um, workplace culture. Unfortunately, the other day I, I had a moment of sorrow because I had um, asked for and, and got the day off for the solar eclipse on April 8th, and. Um, as I was talking to my boss and she was okay with it, I, I had tears in my eyes because that was the first job ever that I felt comfortable asking for a vacation day. Um, I didn't feel it. At, I, I worked at two different tech companies. I didn't feel that way. At my last job at the tutoring center, I didn't feel that way. At Washington Tech, I definitely didn't feel that way. Right? People expected me to fill in for everything else because they had family members and all that. When I was working on my PhD, my advisor felt very highly of me and she thought that every day I took a day off was a day that I wasn't winning a Nobel Prize, right? And she didn't realize that sometimes a break can, 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 can really uh, help me clear my head. And so it was my, the first time I ever felt comfortable asking for a day off. 
And so I had tears in my eyes. As I left her office, it dawned on me maybe I should write an email to thank her for the day off. Not only just to thank her, but to document it. Because at other jobs that I've had, I've asked for time off and then my boss conveniently forgot or uh, something else comes up. Oh, my kid has COVID or whatever. And I really despise having to document it. I mean, it's not hard for me to send a two minute email, right? The, the, the thing I dislike is that I have to do it, right? I, I really despise that I'm constantly playing defense when I'm at work. I, I really wish there was more camaraderie. And um, it's just like the Bismuth art. It's very beautiful, but it's really messy to pour, right? And uh, it makes me really value uh, making sure that um, I make the right connection so I can get, get the most out of it, right? This is the Peter Dislike Show. Bum, 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 The Peter Dislike Show. Bum, 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 bum.